Well, this has been a crappy day. Um, so, I guess I'm doing better. I mean, my dad is actually worse than when he went in, only because he had a second stroke. And that basically, it was a mild stroke. That's all there was to it. It was a mild one. But I don't know if I've become numb to the whole thing. Like I said, I don't know if I've become numb to the whole thing to where now I'm used to it. And uh, I'm just basically taking it one day at a time or, you know, maybe I'm just bottling it all up still and just not letting it out. I don't know. But, um, you know, it just, I guess more or less on Sunday, but we didn't really know what was going on, what was happening, you know, what was what was the condition, what's the prognosis, what's the treatment, what's the yada, yada, yada. A lot of unknowns, but over the past couple of days, we've been getting more and more answers, and yes, he had another mild stroke, but <coughs> that's normal because the medication that they're giving him right now, not only does it thin his blood, but it also breaks up any blockages that might still be there, and you don't, you could, you have a blockage in your leg, clot in your leg, you could have one in your lung, you could have one all sorts of places and not know it, and the stuff that they're doing is breaking all that up. So, it's, it's like now that I know that he's at the hospital, and despite what may happen, he's in the best care that he can possibly be in, and unfortunately because I caught him too late um, you know I walked into his room and he wasn't there I thought maybe he was doing a walkabout or was going to the bathroom or something like that but because he left his phone right there on the table which obviously he can't have his phone in surgery but seeing his phone there in an empty room at first it was I don't know how to explain what the feeling was. It's just kind of... Uh, I can't explain what the feeling is. Kind of unsettling, I guess. Seeing that empty room. But his phone was sitting there. I think that's what did it for me. Seeing his phone sitting there. But he wasn't in the room. I'm pretty sure that's what did it for me. Because I know that he's in good care, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have as much to worry about as I did before. I'm just trying to be as positive as I possibly can. Man, I. So, that's pretty much all I can do. I know that's what you guys are going to say, just to stay strong and so on. This definitely hits home. There's no doubt about it. This has uh, been very stressful. I have not gotten very much sleep over the past couple days. It's been a strain that I thought that uh, I would only have to worry about with my kids or something. Text 
message for him for when he does wake. But um, what are they doing up here? Oh, looks like somebody hit that. Oh, that was that accident from yesterday. There was a big accident. Somebody slid off the road and hit that um, barrier. So it looks like they're just fixing it now. Um, anyway, I'm mumbling and so on. I'm just, just kind of out there, I guess. I mean, I'm focused on the road. Don't think that I'm crazy. I'm going to take somebody out or anything. I'm focused on the road. And there are cameras. Isn't that interesting? I don't remember seeing that. There are two cameras on that pole that we just passed. Those aren't lights, those are cameras. I wonder what that's there for. Traffic cam maybe? Better not be a speed cam. Um, oh, I can definitely tell that it's, it's definitely that uh, valve that's stuck. My displacement on demand is still working. So it's probably just that valve. It's not considered to be a critical check engine. It's just more or less to let you know that there's something you should get checked out. Um, when my oil pressure switch, my oil pressure sensor was bad, that turned off the DOD. But um, just having this uh, valve, I mean, it's not critical to the operation of the vehicle, but at the same time, my remote start doesn't work, which is kind of unusual, why they let you uh, have deodorant anyways, it doesn't matter, shoot, I'm rambling about all sorts of different things, I'm really sorry, there's another one of those cameras, right there, did you see that, well I thought I wasn't going to be able to get around, but you asshole, go just fast enough, and then you're going to get over and get off, could have got around you, but... We'll just barely crawl behind in front of this guy, just enough so that we can get over. Or not. Apparently you just decided to put in overdrive. I'm sorry guys, I'm rambling about different stuff. I am focused on the roads, so don't think that I'm going crazy or something. But just a lot of different things going through my mind, a lot of different possibilities that are out there. You gotta try to stay as strong as I can. It is a strain. There's no doubt about that. It's very difficult having to deal with this. I, as I said before, I knew that someday I would have to deal with something like this. I just hope that it would be just that phone call that you get at 2 in the morning that says, oh, by the way, your dad passed away in his sleep or it was quick and painless or something like that. Not one of these, <coughs> excuse me, one of these kind of slow, degenerative type, humiliating. I mean, it's, it's humiliating when you go from someone who can tie their own shoes, wipe their own ass, and take their own showers to having to have somebody do all those things for you. That's, that takes you down a couple of notches. The only, the closest thing that I can relate to that is when I had surgery myself. I had surgery on my uh, uh, palm to remove a tumor that was there. I was, uh, I think I was about 20, 21. And for like, I don't know, for two, three hours, I had like no control over what was going on with my body. Needless to say, coming off the anesthetic, everybody reacts differently. Coming off the anesthetic, even though I had to fast for 24 hours, it didn't matter because it wasn't like I completely cleaned myself out. It wasn't like I had a colonoscopy. So, waking up from the anesthetic, not really being all there, and I remember 
didn't even realize that I had crapped my uh, gown thing or whatever. And that was embarrassing. It really was. Even though I knew at the time that all the nurses had seen it a million times and I was no different. It took me down a couple of notches. I just felt like, oh my God, I can't even hold in my own... You know, you know, I'm not trying to get gross or anything, but it's just... I, I just remember feeling so helpless at that point. You know, I was only 20, 21 years old. And I was having to have somebody clean me up. Granted, it was after surgery and so on, but it was kind of like... It's kind of like what my dad's going through right now, except every day and that's humility it really is it's just because you, you you're no longer independent you can no longer take care of the basic things and I was following a uh, or just yesterday because I was searching YouTube for stroke, stroke victims, and all this, you know, all this stroke information. And there's a gentleman I can't remember his uh, YouTube name, but I will uh, put it down here. He went through a stroke, and he had to rehabilitate himself through therapy and so on. And he's still not a hundred percent back to what he was before. But I watched probably a dozen of his videos or more, and it was really inspiring. I'm meaning to send him a message. Really inspiring to hear him going through the same exact thing. You know, having trouble just taking a bath. And the things that uh, he does to make the best of it. <coughs> and it's going to be, you know, one day at a time. My dad may fully recover and walk out and feel like a million bucks. Or he may be disabled for the rest of his life in this condition. We don't know. Only time will tell. Sadly, that's just the way that it is. So, I sort of have a feeling what my dad's going through, that helplessness. He's powerless to control his own basic things that he's been able to control since he was four years old. And I know that in some way, shape, or form, we're all losing control of our own bodies <clears throat> as time goes on and we age